Hey, well, welcome back to my corner. So again, we're covering Telltale's The Walking Dead, which is great. Last time I got tinnitus, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. But hey, that uh, satisfying thing I promised in the last video. It's in this one. It's, at, it's near the end, though. So stay tuned. After we make it to Savannah, we end up walking through the streets to make it to the riverfront. Then all of a sudden, a church bell goes off. What's suspicious is, it went off 20 past the hour. Meaning, someone deliberately rang it. Lee sees a figure dive away on the roof, and all of a sudden, the creepy man's voice calls in, telling us to get out of the street. So, we all think that's the same person. Then all of a sudden, hordes of walkers are on us. Well, that's just great. I take a quick second to save Kenny's life. Oh, thank God. And Ben leaves Clem to die in this horde of walkers. Ben, you had one job! Well, time for more depressingly bad shooting! Great. And the hero of the day, Chuck, saves Clem. And he holds off the horde of walkers with the shovel while we escape. Finding a house to stop at, we're trying to find a way inside. We all discover that there's actually a pet door to this house. Great. Unfortunately, it's locked. But it has one of those radioactivated locks. So the question is, where's the dog collar? Oh, would you look at that? There's a grave. That wouldn't happen to have the dog in it, would it? So you know what we do? We dig up that grave, because that's the best idea, clearly. And this will also be something I will censor, because I'm the one editing this video and I don't want to see this over and over again. Point is, we get the collar and open the door. Great, we're in the house now. And it's Ben's, Kenny's, and my job to sweep the house while Omid finds a couch. You know, for his hurt leg. I'm tasked with sweeping the first floor, Ben's tasked with sleeping- I'm tasked with sweeping the first floor, Ben's tasked with sleep. I'm tasked with sleep. I'm tasked with sweeping the first floor. Ben's tasked with sweeping the second floor. And Kenny is tasked with sweeping the the, the, the attic. That's a sign that it's 3 a.m. and I've been up for 16 hours. Theoretically, I should be going to bed now, but <laughs> nope. After getting that all done, Ben calls us up to check on Kenny. Turns out that Kenny found a little boy. Is that boy alive? No, but it reminds him of his son. Now you can either make Kenny kill the kid. That's wrong phrasing. The kid's already dead. You can either make Kenny put down the physical body, or you can do it yourself. And turns out there's actually some cut content from the game, such as Ben being able to shoot this uh, kid, I guess. I ended up shooting the kid, despite the better option probably being the wrench because it makes less noise. And I give the kid a proper funeral. While burying him, this weird... Creepy ass stalker dude decides to spy on me while I'm burying the kid. So when I notice him, he runs away, which draws everyone else out of the house. So great, now we know we're being stalked. Again, our goal is to find a boat, so everyone else is assigned to stay back at the house while Kenny and I go look for one at the par the, the harbor. After a close call, we got our dreams dashed. Oh, well, that's just great. Oh, by the way, there's a sick pile of walkers. Who did that? Only God knows. All of a sudden, there's a person that shows up, so we go to hide. We both think that this may be the same person that was stalking us. So we decide to question her. On our way, somehow this person ducks under the, the, the newsstand and then ends up behind me. And then we end up in a brawl, and this can end in one of two ways. Either you end up getting your ass kicked, or you end up putting your gun to this person's forehead. Lee? Now... Is it impressive that Clem was able to do this? Yes, of course. But Clem, next time I tell you to do something, just... just do it! You're not from Crawford. Okay, no duh, but what is Crawford? I decide to point out that this lady is not the guy on the radio. Well, that's a relief. I give a quick warning to Kenny, but it's too late. He shot off his gun, but uh, Hilda tripped him, so she didn't get hurt. But it did make a lot of noise. So you know what that means? A lot more walkers show up, but that's not before we get to ask her a few more questions. By the way, just in case I don't mention this later, her name's Molly. What exactly is Crawford? And she points to the giant pile of walkers and she says everything beyond that honestly a very lion king answer was she the person spying on us earlier the answer is no but she was ringing the bells around town to draw walkers away from her while she scavenges which honestly is pretty smart why are there no kids in crawford because she knew we weren't crawford because clem was there apparently there's a society of you know survival of the fittest meaning children that are under the age of 14 and old sick people are a burden on society. 
So, sort of like how the federal government sees people. So yeah, the walkers show up and Molly decides to abandon us. Except she has a heart and Clem asks her not to. So great, Clem makes it up to the balcony. Kenny made it up to the balcony. Kenny still is injured, so I wasn't able to make it up. I push a dumpster out of the way so I can escape. Turns out they're coming from all sides and Molly throws down her pickaxe. That's either a pickaxe or a nice pick. I really cannot tell. So I pry open the manhole cover, making it down into the sewer system. We have to get past all these walkers, and apparently by turning on water in different areas, they can draw them away. So once I figure out that puzzle, I get to see what those walkers were feeding on. You must have tried to hide out down here. Rest in peace, Chuck. Rest in peace. Well, we can at least add that to the things of bad things Ben did. Continuing down this path, I get grabbed by a walker. I accidentally shoot it, which attracts some attention, but ultimately I kill it with a pickaxe, or ice pick, I guess. Then there's another walker that I ice pick, and then after all that, I see a way out of this godforsaken sewer. While trying to get up to the ladder, I dislodge this, uh, sign which reveals a tunnel where does this tunnel lead to it leads to a nuclear fallout shelter in which it houses a bunch of cancer survivors because they don't know who i am they assume i'm from crawford and hold me at gunpoint i convince them that i'm not from crawford and i even lie to them telling them that we have medical supplies since they have sick here you know when someone's sick in media because they're always sleeping Vernon here decides to help us. Making it back home, turns out Molly's here. During our polite, friendly conversation, I hand Molly back her pickaxe, or ice pick, whatever it is. Krista begs Vernon to go take care of her husband, and he goes to check on him. While Vernon's taking care of Omid, I go to find Clementine, because for whatever reason, she's not here. I end up finding her in the shed, and... Well, that's probably the happiest thing I've seen all day. After assessing the boat, Kenny gives us the bad news and the good news. The bad news is the boat's battery's dead and it's out of fuel. The good news is everything else is fine. So therefore, if we get a new battery and more gas, it'll be able to take us on the water. So that's great. I propose we get the things we need from Crawford, since they probably not only have fuel and a battery for the boat, but they also probably have medicine for Omid's leg. And Vernon very much does not like that plan. But everyone else does, so we're gonna do that. Clem asks to come with us to Crawford. Now, uh, considering that the only person not going is Omid, and he could potentially die while we're gone, potentially leaving Clem with a walker, and also considering that Clem's a crack shot, you know what? She's coming with us. The plan is to sneak into Crawford and grab the stuff we need and get out. And we're gonna get there through the sewers. Right before we leave, Kenny tells me that the boat can only fit five people. Meaning we're gonna have to cut someone loose. I vote Ben. After being reintroduced to Bree because she was also in the nuclear fallout shelter, we head off for Crawford. Once we make it to Crawford, I attempt to ambush a guard, but, uh, plot twist, the guard's a walker. And so's everyone else. So we run into the school and shut the walkers out. Once we make it into the school, everyone else is going on about how screwed we are. Except for Vernon, he's smart. Because walkers are... Dumb. So therefore, it'll be a lot easier to get everything we need. Assigning two people to each different thing we need, Bree and Kenny are getting the fuel, Krista and Vernon are getting the medicine, and Molly and I are getting the battery. And I leave Clementine to watch over Ben. Now, if an eight-year-old, of all people, is assigned to watch a college kid, you know that college kid isn't exactly the brightest person in the room. Going to the motor pool, the door's jammed. Great. And then the walker falls from the sky, and then Molly beats the sh** out of it. Obviously, there's some pent-up aggression right there. Fortunately, Molly brought us a car jack. And now we're racing to get into the motor pool before walkers eat us. Great. Ooh, look at that, a car that might still have its battery. But we gotta lower it though, cause it's too high up. If I cut the hydraulic line, it'll come right down. So I asked to borrow a- Hilda. Well, I mean, we all have our things. I'm a normal person and she likes to name ice picks. Definitely not fucking crazy. Now that I have Hilda, I cut the hydraulic line and the car comes crashing down. Great, now we're gonna attract all the walkers. After disconnecting the battery, we can make our escape and head back to the school. Molly leaves with the battery as an insurance policy to go on an errand. On my way back to the classroom, 
Bree and Kenny bust through those doors with a metric butt ton of walkers chasing them. So that's great. Once we're able to shut the doors, I slide the hatchet into the handle so, you know, they can't open the door. After some brief bonding between Clem and Lee about school, I decide to go check on Krista and Vernon. How the hell did all these walkers show up? They literally had no way to get in. Telltale, please explain this. I'm gonna be honest about the shooting here. It's still bad, sort of. Don't get me wrong. But it is better than uh, episode three shooting. Great, I saved Krista and Vernon. And it turns out they're having trouble opening the medicine cabinet because there's a four digit code. And you know, if we wanted to guess the code, I mean, we'd be here for how long? So I look for clues. Looking in a manila folder, I find a cassette tape. There just so happens to be a camera here. So we watch the thing. The patient in this tape, Anna is pregnant and the doctor gives her a day to decide if she wants to leave Crawford forever or if she wants to let him murder her child. As you know, the rules are very clear. The termination is mandatory. You don't have to tell them. Tell them it was just nausea. But you gave me something for it and it went away. This is my problem, not yours. If Oberson finds out that I could see old evidence of a pregnancy, I'm sorry, but these are the rules. This evil fucker is a damn psychopath. Unfortunately, the medicine cabinet code wasn't in that tape, so I'm off to find some more tapes. And it turns out, that evil doctor was the one Molly was beating the shit out of. Which, good for her, you should've let me join in. Now that I found the bastard, I searched him for tapes. I found one and a code to a locker. Checking out his locker, I found another tape. Watching the next tape, where the code is revealed and Anna kills the doctor. Honestly, I see this on the same level as woman kills attempted rapist. Now that we have the medicine, Krista and Vernon head back to the classroom while I watch the last tape. In the last tape, Molly is getting diabetic medicine for her sister. And this is the last amount she will be getting because again this doctor is evil heading back to the classroom molly shows up and i show sympathy for what she's gone through regarding crawford oh jeez ben. ben For God's sake, I have interacted with people that have stared me square in the face and said Chinese people have landed on the moon. I have also dealt with people who back in 2020 punished me for calling it the Wuhan virus. I have even had an interaction with a feminist at Camp Witsit who told me that some other guys had brought some thing or whatever that they weren't supposed to and I told her to report it and somehow she made me defend those guys. So I've dealt with some pretty stupid people. But you, you Ben, oh you, the stupidest fucking person I've ever seen. That action was the only thing keeping us from being mobbed by walkers. So great, Clem saves Molly's life and we're cornered in the classroom now. Ben breaks and admits what he's done to Kenny. And not just Kenny, mind you, all of us. It's been me all along, putting all of us in danger. Katja and Duck, it was all me. It was all me. Wait a minute. What are you saying? It was me who made the deal with the bandits at the Motor Inn, slipping them supplies. I thought maybe I could keep them off our backs. When it got discovered, that's when they attacked. And that's when Duck... And that's when Kenny flew at Ben. Now, I actually agree with him dealing with this little sh** later, but doing it right now, you know, that's sort of wasting valuable time we could be using to escape. So we take a vote to decide whether we kick Ben out or not. Krista abstains, Clem votes against kicking him out, and Kenny and I vote to cut him loose. Right as the voting ended, the walkers kill Bree. Let's add that to the list of things Ben caused. After that, we waste no time in running into the armory. In escaping the armory, Kenny gives me a shotgun. And God, this sequence is so good. I can't believe it. The shooting here is actually good. Then again, Telltale didn't create a whole new system to shoot. This worked. And if they kept that through the entire game, the shooting in this game would be great. Once we make it to the top of the tower, everyone climbs out down the ladder, except for me and Ben, because Ben falls and I'm holding him to keep him from dying. I can either pull him up 
or I can do as he asks. Let me go. He asked me to drop him. Oh, ho, ho. your wish is my command. The thing that Ben feared most was getting eaten by walkers alive. And that's exactly what happened to him. It's great! And by the way, before anyone comes to me and says, Oh, you're being too hard on Ben. Let's remind ourselves of what Ben did to deserve this. Number one, he made a deal with the bandits that resulted in Duck getting bitten and thus Katja killing herself. Him stealing the medicine to make the deal with the bandits also got Carly killed. It caused Lily to be ejected from our group. Ben left Clem to die and caused Chuck to die. And then he took the hatchet out which nearly got everyone killed and did get Bree killed. So yeah, try debunking that. Getting back from Crawford, everyone thinks Omid is dead, when in reality he was just sleeping. He's perfectly fine. Omid asks where Ben is, and Kenny tells him that I did what I had to. Let's put did what I had to right back up here. It's glorious. On my way to talk to Clem, Vernon and I have a bit of a spat. Vernon offers to take Clem off my hands, and therefore she'll be safe because apparently she's not safe with me. And I tell him to walk away. Molly and I end up parting ways, which best of luck to her. If this is what's best for her, it's best for her. Clem asks what I did with Ben. And I told her that he sacrificed himself to save the rest of us, which is not true, but it's, it's a nice thing to tell her. Clem asks if we'll have enough time to look for her parents and uh, I answer honestly. And she's sad about that because unfortunately we probably won't be able to. But spoiler alert, we actually do find him in the next episode. Clem and I take a nap and then when I wake Wake up, she's gone. I walk out into the backyard and find her hat. I also find her walkie-talkie, and then a walker ambushes me. I ended up dropping Clem's hat, which now has a little bit of blood on it. Because... Oh, sh**. Lee got bitten. Oh, well, that's just great. Clem's gone now. Likely, she was kidnapped by Vernon. So thanks a lot, Vernon, I'm gonna die now. I tell the others about my bite, and they come to the fallout shelter with me. There, a voice on the radio comes in. It's not Vernon, but it's the stalker. Apparently he's kidnapped Clem. Thanks a lot, stalker. Finally, I tell the stalker kidnapper to not hurt Clem. To be continued, all right, let's look at our choices. Did you kill the boy in the attic? I mean, it just would have been cruel to have Kenny do it. Did you lie to or threaten Vernon? I mean, yeah. I'm surprised I'm in the slim majority on whether to let Ben die or not. And revealing your bite to the group. I mean, it depends on your level of stoicism. I mean, I'm pretty stoic when it comes to this stuff. But I mean, if it's gonna be about whether I'm gonna die or not, I think it's fair to tell the other people. God, I hate Ben. I mean, yeah, fortunately, you can deal with him in the next episode. But I don't have to anymore, so good for my sanity. But yeah, keep an eye out for episode 5. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you're on Rumble, go follow me and check out some of my other videos. They're great. I highly recommend them. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. See ya.